啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦。All hail the power of Jesus. All hail the power of Jesus. Name, let angels possess for let angels possess for bring forth. Came to love. 
Let your light on us shine. Teach us how to love each other. Lift us to the joy divine. Teach us how to love each other. Lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus, which the morning stars began. Cross of love is reigning on us, joining people hand in hand. Ever singing much with our war, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads 
praise of summer in the triumph song of life. Joyful music lead us somewhat in the triumph song of life. La 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 la
Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your death, your resurrection, and life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for we are commemorating today what you did several years ago. And that is still powerful. That is still relevant in our lives today, Lord. We give you glory, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the amazing grace that delivered us from darkness and death. Glory be to your name in the highest law. We are doing this today in the remembrance of what you did. Not as the world celebrated, but as we know what you have done and what you did for us. And what you are still doing every day. Sitting even after your death and resurrection, you are still seated by the right hand of God in heaven. Interceding for us daily. Glory be to your name in the highest father. We appreciate this Lord. We appreciate this Lord. We appreciate this Lord. And we glorify your name. Have your way in your word. Give us understanding of your word. Give us translation of your word. According to your mind, O Lord. The word of God says, Who knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man? And therefore, who may know the things of God except the spirit of God? Therefore, we ask for your spirit today. That we may be able to speak according to your mind. And according to the way you want us to present them, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory name. to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, our Passover. Say that to somebody. Jesus Christ, our Passover. Jesus Christ, our Passover. Jesus Christ, our Passover. We are going to read. That is the topic of the message. We are going to read the book of Matthew 27, 33 to 66. It's a little bit long, and uh, we want to be patient with our reader, and as we follow it to our own eyes. I don't want us to read together, but I want him to read, and uh, I want everybody to follow through with their eyes. If you can whisper it, you can whisper yourself, read after him, but make it silent, but speak out silently to read after him, so that we can know that you are also following it because it's long. And we're also going to read Luke 24, 1 to 12. The story is just to recap of the story that tells us about what, what people don't read regularly. You know, the story of the arrestation and the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. His arrest and crucifixion. And that's what we're going to see before we go into what the meaning of Passover and how it resonates with us or how it can be translated to us. How Jesus becomes has become our Passover. Now, Matthew 27, Matthew chapter 27, we're going to read 33 to 66, 33 to 66, if you are there, shout hallelujah, hallelujah, I'm hearing a couple of voices, Matthew 27, 33 to 66, shall we go? And when they had come to a place called Gog- Gogotha, mm-hmm. that is to say, a place of a skull, mm-hmm. they gave him sour wine, mingled it with gall to drink. Mm-hmm. But when he had tasted it, he would, he would not drink. Mm-hmm. Then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Sitting down, they kept watch over him, and they put up over his head the accusation written against him. This is the Jew, Jesus. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, "You would, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross." Likewise, the chief priests also mocked him with the scribes and elders, saying, "Who he saved others, himself he cannot save." If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let, let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was great darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, 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 Lama Shabbatani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Some of those who stood there, when they heard that, said, This man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with sour wine and put it on a, re on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, Let him alone. Uh, let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out, saying, with a loud voice, and, ye and yielded up his spirit. And then, behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth qu uh, quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him who were guiding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. And many women who followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, were there, looking on from afar. Among them, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Now when evening had come, there came a rich man from Arimathea, named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be given. When, Jesus, when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. And Mary Magdalene was there and the other Mary sitting opposite the tomb. On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive how that deceiver said, After three days I will raise, I mean I will rise. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure unto the third day, lest the disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people he has risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard, go your way, make it as secure as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 24, 1 to 12. Luke 24, 1 to 12. Luke 24, 1 to 12. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found a stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went to, and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to him, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, he but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you that he was still in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of the sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven, and so, I mean, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of uh, James, and the other woman with them, who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to, like, seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen clothes lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. So the trial after his arrest, his uh, uh, trial and crucifixion, they knew that he, he was always saying that he will resurrect on the third day. So they did what? They tried to hold him there to say, he will not, we will see how resurrection will be. We will lock up the, the tomb and we'll put soldiers there that they will not be able to come out. So that the last deception will not be more than the first one. So they thought everything he had been saying before was a lie. That he was the son of God born to them. They did not believe that he was a Messiah. They did not believe any of his messages. But sometimes they will say he's praising himself and talking about himself. There is no evidence. He's just the he, nobody is witnessing him, he is witnessing himself. And they believe all those were deception. And now his death also will be deception. And therefore they don't want his resurrection to, to happen. Because they believe that they could come and steal the body now and say that he has, has resurrected. But God showed himself. And by making him our Passover. The resurrection from the dead was miraculous. His death and his life was miraculous. Everything about the Lord Jesus Christ was Pointing to the fact that God sent him into the world. Amen. Amen. So that is why the Bible called him the first among the dead. 
Now, why did the Bible call him that? He was the only one that died, aside from Elijah, that the chariot took him into heaven. He died and he raised bodily. The body did not decay. He rose from the dead bodily with his bones and the flesh, and he went into heaven the way he came. It happened like that because he was never formed by man, by sand. He was a son of God that was put into the womb of a woman in order to fulfill his assignment on earth. And that was the way God designed it to be, that he could come like a... Like a if he came like a king, a lot of people would not believe in him. They would say because he is a supernatural being, that is why he was able to do that. But the God made him come as a child so that he can see that as human, you can do anything God asks you to, to do. Amen. Amen. We have power to do everything God commanded us to do. That is why what Jesus Christ represented. That is why we witness. I mean, those, the people in those days, they witnessed his childhood. And he was growing in their presence to show that you can also be know about God at the age of 12. From the age of 12, he was already preaching the gospel. Most children today, they are more than 12. They don't know anything in the Bible. So that is showing us every stage of Jesus' life showed that what we can actually do if we really wanted to do, I mean, want to do them. So let's focus on the, on the topic, Jesus Christ, our Passover. Okay. Jesus Christ, our Passover. What is the meaning of Passover? A Passover is the festival that God commanded the children of Israel to always celebrate yearly, to, com to commemorate the liberation of the people of Israel from Egypt, slavery, to the promised land. That is what a Passover means, to celebrate the timing of their passing out of Egypt, you see, and the, what the great miracle God did to deliver them, that they will not, the children, children, and the generations after them will, after them will never forget that. God loves to put things into memory. And why does that happen? Because God wants people to, generations that did not witness his power, to know what he can do. That is the reason why God wants us to pass information of his miracle, signs and wonders to, from generations to generations. Whatever God has done for you as parents, you pass it over to your children. So that they can have faith in the God that you believe in. That this God is able to deliver. Otherwise, they will see some other information and they will begin to, 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 to believe in them. Without, because you are not telling them what your God can do. You are just telling them to give your life to their lives to him. So that is why God wanted the Israelites to celebrate yearly so that the children, children that did not witness then will also do what? We also be able to tell young children that this is what God did. He brought nine plagues on the children of Israel, on the Egyptians and he made us pass through the dry, sea, dry land inside the sea, in the middle of the sea. It became dried. Uh, he created a pathway for us to pass through the sea. And uh, he buried all the all Pharaoh and his, and his all warriors in the water. And we, we were delivered from their slavery, from pain, from the calamity, from torture. The Lord delivered us from slavery. And he brought us to a promised land. Amen. Amen. Did the Egyptian capture Israelites in slavery or did they come to Israel to remove them? No, they didn't. The Israelites went to their country voluntarily through uh, 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 Joseph. Joseph became the first to go there as a slave and he became a free person and he became their minister. And the families joined him later. 70, the Bible called them 70 in total, joined and they became a nation after many years. And all of a sudden, a king that did not know Joseph reigned, became a king and they made everybody just like that. He just said, all these people are slaves some today without writing application to be a slave. When they did not go and capture them in war, imagine you come to a country to live and after you have multiplied and grown and the president of the nation said you are a slave, you cannot have any access to anything. A lot of people are in a slavery today, voluntary one. You brought yourself to countries to go and work. You brought yourself to companies and places. And all of a sudden, you are becoming a slave, but a, a slave that is free, just like the Israelite. They were free to eat, to eat. According to them, when they got to the to the wind and they said, Moses, you didn't leave us to eat our our uh, uh, onion, our omelette, and our meat in Egypt. We enjoyed it. Yeah, they were enjoying in slavery, in pain. Many people are like this. You eat, you go out whenever you like, come back whenever you like, but you are still a slave. And that is what Jesus Christ came to deliver us from. That is why we call him our own word, 
our Passover day, our deliverer from the land of our Egypt to our promised land of peace. Amen. 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 Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. In the book of Exodus chapter 12, 13 and 14, let's see what the Lord said concerning the Passover. I, I've told you the meaning of Passover is a festival that God commanded the Israel. It's, it's not what they decide to do. It's what God commanded them that through Moses that they must be doing every year to always celebrate yearly in order to commemorate the liberation of the people from Egypt's slavery to the promised land. And now... Exodus 12, 13 and 14, what does it say? Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. Look at that. He said the blood shall be a sign. It was the, it was the blood. The Lord told them to kill a, blood, a, a, a lamb and move, put the blood on every what? Every out the doorstep or the door pole of every house. So that when the death begin to pass through all Egypt, it will, not, it will not touch the Israelite. So blood was now become a sign, a symbol for liberation, for liberty of the children of Israel. Look at that. Yes? And when I see the blood. So when I see the blood. I will pass over you. I will pass. I will not, I will not strike you. I will spare you, the Israelite. Yes? And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you. And the plague will not be on you to destroy you. When I strike the land of Egypt. When I strike the land of Egypt. So this day. So this day. Shall be to you a memorial. Shall be to you a memorial. And you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. You shall keep it as a feast to the unto the Lord. Throughout your generations. Throughout generations to generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. It shall be as a feast by everlasting ordinance. Amen. Amen. Then if you read further, you see, it tells them to do it yearly and how they will have to... We are not going to talk about how we want them to celebrate. We just want to relate it to how Jesus become our what? Our Passover. Amen. Amen. So, as the blood of lamb... Look, at in those days, it was the blood of the lamb that was killed and the blood was made as a covenant of God to deliver the Israelites. But today, the blood of the Son of God was shed. As what? As a so atonement for our sin. sin, which is our Passover blood. Amen. Amen. So that is one, one big reason why Jesus Christ is our own Passover. Oh. Amen. Amen. And that we must celebrate and remember his death and resurrection every year. So if everybody is telling you not to remember Easter, not to remember anything, you just they don't understand what they're talking about. They don't have understanding of what it. God love. I can bring you through Genesis to Revelation. The reasons why God loved people to remember what he did. God wants you to remember what you do. Not because he wants, he's proud, he wants to receive the, 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 your praise like that. He just wants generation and generation to know that he exists. That is, that is God. Because if you keep quiet, if nothing is said about it, then generations that, that didn't know, the children that are born today, for instance, if you stop celebrating Easter or Christmas today, this year, any child born from tomorrow to the age of 40, they will not know anything called Easter and, and uh, Christmas. Is, it, is that true or false? And they won't know what anything that is related to that. What is it for? And they will begin to live waywardly and any way they like because there is nothing that will trace them to what God, Jesus did and the love of God for humanity. Jesus Christ, our Passover. Now, how Jesus, how can Jesus be related as our Passover? Or how Jesus becomes our Passover? How does Jesus become our Passover? I said here that Jesus is our Passover by the nature of what he did to deliver the world from the satanic slavery to the kingdom of God and peace. So, by, G, by, the coming, by coming into the world to deliver the world, Jesus became our Passover to deliver us from what? From the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God and for bringing us peace. Remember the Israelites, they were in, in pain, in sorrow. In fact, the Bible let us know that the groaning of the children of Israel reached the Lord, isn't it? They are groaning. Somebody can only groan when they are under pressure, isn't it? Somebody can only cry to go when they are in pains and in trouble. So their pains and trouble, the voice of their pains and trouble reached the Lord, and the Lord looked for Moses to deliver them. Amen. 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 So, the, so if you read Genesis, if you are the one that have ever finished the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you will understand gospel better. That the, what happened in the Old Testament is a picture of what New Testament is talking about. As Moses was sent to deliver, that is why Moses is a very significant 
figure or name to the Israelites. In fact, most Jewish today, they celebrate, they celebrate Moses more than Jesus. Because they believe Moses is their what? Is their Messiah that came to deliver them in their history, in the history of Israel, deliver them from slavery. So the, the, everything about Moses, everything about Israel is Mo, Moses, 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 Moses. You see? So they found it difficult to put Jesus in. And that was what Jesus Christ came for. To let them know that God sent Moses. You see? Just like he sent him. In those days, Moses came to deliver you from physical slavery. But I have come to deliver you from the satanic and demonic slavery. Amen. 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 So what the first deliverance you had was not the deliverance of the flesh, but I have come to save your body and your soul. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus is our Passover. How Jesus, how does Jesus become our Passover? He is our Passover by the nature of what he did to deliver the world from the satanic slavery to the kingdom of God and peace. He delivered us and He gave us peace. He came to give peace. He came to set us free. Just like Moses was sent to send the Israelites free. And uh, Jesus came to offer, the blood of the Lamb was offered for Israelites to be free from Egypt. But the blood of Jesus was offered for us to be free from slavery of Satan and from sin. In the book of First Corinthians chapter 5, Verse 7 to 8, Apostle Paul told us how Jesus became our Passover. Yes, 1 Corinthians, can you read for us? 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 7 to 8. Therefore, purge out the old living. It said, therefore, purge out the old living. That you may be a new lump. Yes. Since you truly are unliving. Yes. For indeed, Christ our Passover was, was sacrificed for yes. us. Therefore, let us keep the feast not with the old living, mm -hmm. nor with the living of malice mm -hmm. and wickedness, but with the unliving bread of sincerity and truth. Amen. You see that? It said, Therefore, push out the old living, that you may, you may be a new lamb, since you truly are unliving. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Jesus was sacrificed for us, and therefore, his lamb was used for the remission. The, the blood that was shed served as rem remission for our sin. Just like the Lord used through Moses the blood of the Lamb to deliver the Israelites from their slavery. And the blood of another Lamb, that is Jesus Christ, was used for the remission of our sin for us to be free. Not only for the Christian, but for the whole world. But the problem is only those who believe will partake of this offer. So the, 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 the opportunity that God has presented to all people, all mankind, can only be assessed or annexed by your belief. By your belief. If you believe in this, it will become your Passover and it will deliver you from sin. Not only deliver you from sin, also set you free from any bondage that sin and the devil has kept you. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 25. Yes? For I received from the Lord. I received from the Lord. That, that which I also delivered to you. That is that which he said, whatever I deliver to you is what I receive from the Lord. Yeah. I do not deliver to you my own topic, my own messages, but what I receive from the Lord. That is this is what I want every pastor, every evangelist, every bishop to be doing to the church. If we are all doing that, the church will be on the same face. On the same page, we'll be preaching the same thing. We'll be doing the same thing, believing the same thing. But because ministers of God are not speaking to the people what they heard from the Lord, they speak to the people what they think from theology, what theology told them, what psychology told them, what common sense told them, and there is nothing commonsensical about the gospel. You must not preach God's common sense. And the child of God must not believe in common sense. You cannot believe in theology that has nothing to do with the truth of what the mind of God is. So that is why Apostle Paul said, what we receive is what we are teaching you. Not our common sense, not our mind, not our thought. It has nothing to do with our upbringing or background. But we are speaking to you what we know from him, what he has given unto us. Yes? That the Lord... On, that the Lord Jesus on that, the same night that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed the took night bread. he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks when he gave thanks he broke it and said yes take 
eat take and eat this is my body which is broken for you this is my body that was broken for you do this in remembrance of me do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took the cup in the same manner he also took the cup after supper yes saying this cup is the new covenant in blood in my blood he said this is the new cup he represents the new covenant of my blood that I, I will shed for you this do as often as you drink it mm -hmm. in remembrance of me he said do what this blood the night he was betrayed he was having what we call holy communion with his disciples and because of what he would do, because he won't be able to do that after his death. So he decided to show them before his death that this is this wine, fruit juice, is not alcohol. Because you all understand that they used to drink grape in those days. So this grape, as red as it is in this cup, represent it will represent the covenant of my blood with you. The covenant of salvation, of remission of your sin. And I want you to do this yearly in remembrance of what? Of me, do it regularly in remembrance of me. me. Yes, amen. 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 To, to 25. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Can you take it again, please? 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you mm -hmm. that the Lord Jesus on the same night mm -hmm. in which he was betrayed took bread mm -hmm. and when he had given thanks mm -hmm. he broke it and said mm -hmm. take eat this is my body which is broken for you mm -hmm. do this in remembrance of me mm -hmm. in the same manner he also took the cup on uh, after supper saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood mm -hmm. this do as often as you drink it mm -hmm. in remembrance of me mm -hmm. 25 because he shed his blood for the remission of our sin and thereby delivering us from darkness to his kingdom from the slavery of the devil amen amen i, I remember i remember many years ago uh, when god was still just calling me into the ministry i have written this story in the book and they called the city the city of sorrow in that city of sorrow you know no you didn't just bring yourself into the slavery it just happened you just happened to be there you were born there by the virtue of being born in that city, then you actually automatically become what? A slave to a king that was ruling in the land. And everybody was free to do whatever they wanted. Just like we now, we are free to do anything we want. We go to school, we acquire certificates, we acquire jobs and acquire houses and cars. Everybody is free. But the fact still remains that the world is under the bondage. In the book of uh, First John, the Bible told us that the whole, the whole world is under the sway of the power of darkness but we that are believers belong to god you see that even though you are free you think you are free but you are enslaved by the power of darkness if you are not safe if you are not born again you are still under manipulation of the power of darkness in that city of sorrow the king was a ruler and he has some ships around him and they take place they, they take pleasure in 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 killing their citizens, which are their subjects, one after the other, according to whatever they want to do. They kill them, they eat them, they put their blood in another container, they have a pool of blood somewhere, and they have skeletons on the other side of the people that they eat. But before I saw that in that revelation, I, I saw people walking around the city crying. People were going to farm crying. People were going to school crying. People were going to market crying. And they were naked. And they, they didn't even realize they were naked. Anyway, they were just going around crying and crying and crying left and right. So later I, I approached one of them. Why are you people crying like this? Is this a cry? Is this a crying city? Is a wailing city? Everybody's in pains and they are crying. And they are doing their daily activities. And I asked one of them, why are you people crying? He said, I should find I will find out in their palace. So I said, how? He said, then he described the palace to me. Then I went there. As I was approaching the palace, I saw there was a big door. You can see from the distance someone like a beast sitting on the on the throne. And I saw again, as I was cl getting closer and closer, I, I saw some other people that looked like him on the left and the right of his throne. So I got closer and I saw a poor, uh, a, a, something like look like a, uh, a big container, uh, what we call drum in Africa. Then there was a pool, the blood inside, and on the other side there were skeletons of human flesh that are being eaten. You know, you see those skeletons, skulls, and every bones there. So I was watching. Then as they were dancing, these people were dancing. The chiefs and everybody were dancing and singing and jubilating. 
and the king, everybody was in festive mood and festive period. And all of a sudden, I had nest. Then I saw from the chain, the, the chains of people, you know that the way you used to be slave trade in those days, that you chain people like goats. They chained them together and they released one of them to come to the front. And they put his neck on something and just, the, the man came forward with a sword and he just chopped off the head. Bam! Then blood gushed out and into the board and I realized that this is terrible. This is, and the people that they tied down, they look different. They don't look like the chiefs and the king. They look like the people I met in the, in the town. Amen. Amen. Those who look like the people I met, then I discovered that this king actually ruled over the people in, and it, he has taken those people as his subject, as slaves. And he used to take them whenever he wanted to feast. And he killed them. That was his own animal. That's the way he celebrated his festival, to kill his subjects one after the other. So he, keep them, he kept them in a place so that he can have more children, that he can have more chicken to kill, and more goats to celebrate his festival. It's just like you are rearing a, a chicken or goat. You want them to have babies, isn't it? But is it because you love them? Because you want to sell them or eat them. That is the way this this beast that was their king look, was behaving in that land. So I quickly ran from there when I saw that, that this is a wicked king that kept the people to multiply and increase in order to kill them whenever he wanted and also to celebrate with their flesh and their bones. You see? So I ran back to the city. I said, you people need to, you need to depart from here. If there is a need for you to follow me immediately. Because when I was coming from that, into that city, there was no security, there was no gate. So I entered the city freely. So I was believing that these people should be able to live freely with me into the neighboring city that is a free city. So this city looked like a country because they have their own law they are, that govern their land. And they have another city that is next to them. Look at another country, that, but that place is a city of what? Of joy and liberty. So I had them to follow me to the, to the city of joy and liberty. I was speaking to them, shouting on the street, talking to them. They were just shaking their heads. I said, please follow me. They said, we cannot follow you. I said, why? They said, you, can, you don't understand. We can't go. You don't understand. I said, you can go. If you make, if you try, you can go. That is why the Bible says, book of Isaiah chapter 1, it says, if you are willing and obedient, you do what? You eat the fruit of the land. But if you what? Refuse. If you refuse and do what? And rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. They refuse to follow. Only a few follow me. And uh, as we ran, I was running. So the king knew immediately that some people had been escaped. So he, was, he sent his, his uh, chiefs to follow us. That's a warrior. And as we were running, I crossed the land of the border of that country into the, into the land, into this country of joy and peace. Then a few of them followed me. And what surprised me is that those that followed me, there was a white garment that just came upon them pew, from nowhere. As soon as they crossed the, the border, the borderline, then the clothes came upon them. He appeared upon the white garment. And that shows liberty and peace. Amen. 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 That is, and when, when I woke up from the dream, the Holy Spirit let me know that's the way this world is. The world is under the sway of the devil. The people are happy because they can go to school and obtain certificate. They are happy because they can walk and have money and buy car and houses. But the story still remains that you are under bondage and in slavery if you are not born again. You are living in the city of sorrow. You are suffering and smiling. You are suffering and laughing. You are suffering and doing what? And celebrating. You can go to a party and they call you celebrities. You, what are you celebrating when you are under, in, in bondage? You are celebrating, you are just celebrating a, a, a fantasy. You are not celebrating reality because there is no nothing to celebrate when you are in bondage. You just imagine somebody call himself a celebrity because they have money, because they are a star, and yet they are living in bondage. They go home to think. They go home, they are sorrowful. They are tortured by sicknesses. They are destroyed by a lot of trouble. And yet they don't open their, their eyes quickly to see that we are actually in bondage under the sway of the wicked one. That is why we are seeing wickedness. That has nothing to do with God. And I will show you as I continue to tell you what Jesus Christ came to do. You will know why there is problem in the world. Because some people are, we are putting the blame on God for, for having trouble in the world. Some, when they have trouble in their home, they say, it is God. Why is God doing like this? It's not a good God. How can God help when you are not offering, when you are not, when you are not accepting his hands to help you? He wants to help you. You say, no. 
then you have problems you say it is God that caused it. The people need to know. The, even the devil that you are running to is the number one, is your number one enemy. But he's pretending to you as a good person. You see, devil pretends as good that he can be able to do what? To destroy. Just like this king in that village. I was the one to call, that came to the village to give them knowledge of what is really happening. They didn't know. Because all they knew was that their king and which was pretending, giving them everything they want. He allowed them to go to party. He allowed them to smoke. He allowed them to commit adultery or fornication. He allowed them to enjoy themselves. But he had secret intention to kill them one after the other, which they don't know. He had secret to make them multiply so that he can, he can destroy them. You see, he was a beast and the devil reigning in the world. Amen. Amen. And deceiving people with all these little, little cars they have and houses they have and money they have. And they don't have joy. The richest man in this world does not have joy. The richest man in Africa does not have joy. Go and check them. Look around for them. They don't have any happiness. And they don't know the what they are missing is Christ Jesus. In him, there is happiness. Amen. 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 Now let us look at, one after the other, what Jesus Christ came to do. That make us call him our Passover. He brought... Light. The Bible says it brought light. Now, that's number one. We have six important things among all that I, I have time to speak about today. He mm. brought light into the darkness of the world. In bracket, by information and revelation. It's not that it brought touch light or candle. So that's why I put that in the bracket so that young people will understand that he's not talking about touch light or candle. Is talking about information and revelation. Where there is no revelation and information, everybody remains in what? Darkness. In darkness. That's, darkness means ignorance. When you are ignorant, you are living in darkness. But when you receive revelation and information, you become what? You become leaded. Then you become wise and you know your rights around you. Without revelation and information, you don't know what your rights are. Amen. Amen. But when you receive information and revelation, you know what your rights and you'll be able to take hold of your right. In the book of John 8, 12 and John 12, 44 to 46, we're going to see that quickly. John 8, verse 12 and John 12, 44 to 46. John 8, 12. Yeah. Then Jesus spoke to them again saying, Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. I am what? The light. The light. Of the world. I have brought the light to the world. Yes. He who follows me, anyone that follows me, shall not walk in darkness. Will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. But have the light of life. Can you see that? Say, I have brought what into the world. I brought light. light. I am the light, and I brought light into the world. So that is number one thing. That is the first thing Jesus Christ came to do by bringing. Remember when the Lord, the Bible told us that their heart was formed, and it was in total. Darkness and the spirit of the Lord was hovering upon the surface of the heart, and the Lord said, Let there be a what? Let there be light, and there was light. Because you cannot create anything inside darkness. You cannot do what? Nothing can be done perfectly inside darkness. So that was why Jesus, we said, number one work he did, he came to do is to bring light into the world in that book of John 12, uh, 8, verse 12. Let's see. Chapter 12, verse 44 and 46. John, John 12, 44 and 46. Then Jesus cried out and said, Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me, he who believes in me, believes not in me, believe not only in me, but in him who sent me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me, he who sees me, sees him who sees sent me. him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. He said, I have come. I have come like a light into what? Into the into world. Into the world. Can you see that? That is confirmed. Say, I brought light into the darkness of the world so that those who believe by the means of information. You see that? The, the light that I brought is by the means of information and revelation of what your rights are and what you must do to be, to be free from the slavery of the devil, to be free from the bondage of the enemy. I brought that and that relates to what? Translate to light. I brought light to the world. Amen. Amen. Number two, what did Jesus bring come to do in the world? What did he come to do? That's why we call him our Passover. Remember the, type, the topic of the message is Christ Jesus, our Passover. Passover. Number two, he came to deliver the world from perdition and destruction. He came to do what? To deliver the world from perdition and what? 
destruction, destruction by revealing the mind of the father in bracket by revealing the mind of the father he came to deliver the world from perdition and destruction in other words he came the, there's anger of god upon sinners the lord regret that he made man in his image in the book of genesis in chapter uh, uh five the bible said he regret that he created man in what in his image so therefore there was punishment that is going to be upon the disobedience and that was the reason why jesus christ come to deliver the mankind from perdition and destruction in the book of john joel chapter 2 31 and 30, 31 to 32 and john 3 16 that is popularly known joel first joel 2 31 to 32 what does it say the sun shall be turned into darkness the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the lord before the coming of the lord that those are the describing the day of the day of of doom that is after the rapture you see what will begin to happen in the world yes and it shall come to pass it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the lord anyone that calls on the name of the lord before then shall be saved shall be saved anyone that call upon the name of the lord in those tribulations and trials of the world in pains and disaster then the lord will deliver them so he came to deliver the world from perdition and destruction by revealing the mind of god so that is why he was preaching revealing what god's mind about deliverance for those who obey and perdition for those who disobey. So that's the reason why you cannot blame God for anything. For those people that used to blame God for what happened around them. If God has said you must be born again, then you refuse. Then you have a problem. You say it's God that brings it. It's not a good God. How can they bring this to me? How can they cause this in our city? How can they bring When your city refused to be free from under the bondage and the sway of the devil, what do you expect? The Bible, when the Bible says the whole world is under the sway of the power of darkness, then you say you don't want to live there. You want to remain in the world that is God and the devil. Then you now begin to see the symptoms of the devil. Then you now begin to blame God. You see the way people reason. They blame God for what they created, for the problem that they made, and the mistake that, that, that they committed. Then they begin to put the blame unto God. That, it doesn't work like that. In John 3, 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave us what? His only begotten Son, that whoever, look at that, whoever believes in him, those are the ones that are delivered. Not everybody. Although the offer is made, is given to everyone in the world. Christ died and came for the whole world. But there is exception to some people that refuse to believe in him. He said, whoever believes in him, in him will not what? Will not perish, but have everlasting life. life. Only those who believe in him. Those are the ones. The offer is made to every general people in the whole world. But only those who believe will receive deliverance from perdition and destruction. Not everybody. So when you don't believe and you see destruction and perdition, don't blame God. Because you refuse to obey. You refuse to believe. That is why they come amen amen so that is why when you are also a believer if you don't want to witness it in your family preach to your family members because if they are still under the sway of the devil they will make you feel some pain that they are feeling because they are close to you so that is why jesus wanted to also minister his message to preach his word to our family members and friends so that they will not bring the pain that will hurt us if i am born again and my friend or relatives is not born again then whatever happened to them i will feel it and I will not like it. Then that is why we must witness to them. So that we will not be able to witness their pain and feel their struggle. Number three, why did Jesus came? He came to take away sin and to destroy all the works of darkness. In the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 20, the Bible told us that a child will be born unto, them, unto us and his name shall be called Jesus because the Lord has sent him to deliver his people from what? The from sin. sin, from their sin. The Lord has sent him to deliver his people from their sin. In the book of First John chapter 3, verse 8. First John 3, verse 8. Yes? He who sins is of the devil. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. That he may destroy. Can you see that? So he came to take away sin and destroy what? The power of darkness. The works of darkness. Amen. 
Amen. Number four, why, what, what was the reason why Jesus came and he became our Passover? These, these things I've been telling you is the reason why we call Jesus our Passover. Because he enhanced us to pass over from the slavery of the devil into the kingdom of God. The Bible says he brought us from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. 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 So, number four, why do we call Jesus our Passover? He came to deliver the word from what? From pain and bitterness. In bracket, by, es by exposing secrets of the devil. By exposing unto us devil's secret. He came into the world to do what? To deliver us from pain and bitterness. In the book of Job 36 verse 9 to 12. And Isaiah 53 verse 4 to 5. Yes, Job 4 36 9 to 12. Then he tells them their work and their transgressions. He told them their works and their transgressions. That they have acted uh, defiantly. They have acted disobediently. He also opens their ear to instruction. Yes. And commands them that they turn from iniquity. He told them to turn away from what? Iniquity. From iniquity, yes. If they obey and serve him. If they obey and serve the Lord. They shall spend their days in prosperity. They will spend their days in prosperity. Prosperity that he's talking about here does not only relate to money. But in good health. In happiness. In joy. In peace, in anything that makes your life advance forward. That's what we call prosperity, in definition of prosperity. And money also, increase of money, increase of blessing. That's what we call prosperity, not only money. Mm -hmm. So, because when you hear prosperity, some people will think it's not talking about money. Prosperity does not mean money only. It means fulfillment in every rest of life, in your health, in your strength, in your blessing, in your increase, in your achievement. The all and money, increase of money, that's all this thing we call prosperity, to prosper. In other words, to move forward, to advance from stagnancy. You are broken away from stagnancy and you move forward to a place of fulfillment. That's what we call prosperity. He said, if they believe in him and obey him, they will do what? They will live their life in prosperity. Now look at the other side, yes? And their years in pleasures. And their years in pleasures, yes? If they do not obey. If they do not obey. They shall perish they by will the sword. they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge they will die without knowledge in other words they would die because they do not know their right in other words if you don't believe in god you don't know your right you will only begin to get blessing from the devil some people will say what about the people in the world they have money without god go and find out anybody that have money without god and find out the source of the money you see, and that's why the Bible says the blessing of the Lord is the one that make rich and he had no sorrow to it. When you are rich according to God's standard, you will also go to heaven. But you are rich according to the world standard, you may not go to heaven except you repent from your, your sin. So he said those who reject him, they will die because they do not have knowledge. They do not have knowledge of their, their right. First John, I mean, Isaiah 53, 4 to 5, what does it say? Don't forget that what we are treating about is he came to deliver the world from pain and bitterness. 53, 4 to 5. Surely he has borne our griefs. He took our griefs. And carried our sorrows. He carried our sorrow. Yet we esteemed him stricken. Yet we, 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 are not, we are not appreciative of what he has done. Smitten by God. He was smitten by God. And afflicted. He was afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. The punishment for our peace was placed on him so that he can receive our punishment and we can have peace. Yes. And by his stripes we are healed. And by beating him we receive healing from all sickness, pain, and sorrow. Can you see that? So he took all our pains that we can have peace. He took sorrow that we can have joy. He was beaten that we can be healed from all our sicknesses and diseases. Amen. 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 So that is what number four thing he came to do. Number five they came to do is he came to offer his blood for the remission of our sins. For, from the remission of the sins of the world. In other words, in bracket, for those who only those who believe. So he came to deliver the sin, he came to remit the sin of the world, but only those who believe in him will be partakers of what he came to do. That's what I mean by that. You may hear that several times. If you have not taken advantage of obeying him, 
your sins will not be remitted. Your sins will not be taken away. You will still be looked and regarded as a sinner to the kingdom of darkness and even to heaven. In the book of Hebrews 9.22, he told us there that without the remission of, of without the shedding of blood, there cannot be what? The remission of sin. Can you read that? Hebrews 9 22. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. You see, he said, according to the law, almost all things, all things are purified by blood. Yes? And without the, without shedding, the shedding of, of blood, and without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission. There is no remission of sin. And the Leviticus 17 verse 11. Leviticus 17 11. He says the life of the flesh is in the blood. And that is why I have offered mine on the altar for your sakes. Yes, read it again. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar. And I have given mine to you upon the altar. To My make, blood offer it to you upon the altar. To make atonement for your souls. Now look at this. Jesus has not died here. But this is, the, this is showing you what the plan of God is always from the beginning. Yes. It was planned right. Look at that Isaiah 53 too. He said it was punished for a transition. At that time, it was not punished yet. Mm -hmm. But because it has been done, that is the way the program of the art is. Mm -hmm. You see? So that is why I used to tell people, whatever you want, it's not now that God will bring it. It's us already been provided for. But if you don't walk in the path of that provision, you won't see it. So you must walk in the path of provision according to the plan from the beginning of the earth. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? When you look at that, Isaiah 53, he said he was punished, past tense. He was chastised again, past tense. You see, and here in, in Leviticus 17, 11, he said, the life of the flesh is in the blood. That is why I offered mine. Can you see that? Now, this place, he has not died yet. Several years before the manifestation of Jesus on earth, this was already declared that he offered his blood to, to deliver our soul. To deliver our soul. Because blood is needed for souls to be delivered from hell and from the devil. Amen. Amen. So that is what he came to do. He offered his blood to deliver us from the plans of the devil. Matthew 26, 25, 28, what does it say? Matthew 26, 28. Now Jesus Christ himself said this now. Matthew 26, 28. Matthew 26, from verse 28. Yes. For this is my blood. This is my blood. Of the new covenant. Of the new covenant. Which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Which is, is going to be... Here he was holding co uh, 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 communion with his, his, with his disciples. He said, this will represent the blood that we shed. And it will be for the remission of the sin. I have already preached the gospel. I have already shown you all the way. I have revealed all things. I have brought information and revelation. Then for all those things to be, to be what? To begin active in your lives. I also need to do this last one ass assignment. By going to the cross, shed my blood. That the blood will be able to connect all of you to God. And will be deliver your soul completely from the devil. For all those who believe alone. Not for everyone. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. There are some blessings of God that is common to everybody. But there are some provision that is only available for those who are born again. The sunshine is meant for everybody. The rain is for everybody. The moon, the star is for everybody. The earth that is bringing out your crops and vegetation is for everybody. The waters, the rivers is for everybody. But the grace is for those who believe. The remission of sin with his blood are for those who believe. You see, divine assignment, divine provisions, they are for those who believe. Divine healing, divine deliverance, they are for those who believe. Amen. Amen. If you want to be delivered from the sway of the devil and the power of darkness, they are for those who believe. Isaiah in chapter 54 say in verse 17 that is what? They are, for, they are what? They are provisions for the servant of the Lord. Lord yeah. They are the provisions for the servant. Why do we, who are the servants? Those who believe. Mm -hmm. He's not talking about pastor or bishop. He's talking about those who believe are the servants. The, those who serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. I have a few minutes left. Let me go straight to the last point. Then we'll go into the summary of the message by reading some more, a few more Bible passages. Number six of what the Lord Jesus Christ came to do. He came to bring peace to the, to the troubled world. 
He came to bring peace to the troubled world. The world is troubled. The world has ever been troubled. If you notice very well, every year that increases, it brings him tougher troubles. You know, I've been born for a while now. I was born, it's been a lot, it's been a while now. But I've not seen a better year. I've not seen what? A better year. No, I have not seen a better year. It just gets tougher and tougher and tougher and tougher. You know, those days you will say, I remember in 1983, there was some situation that the country was passing through in the country I, I came from. And we were saying, why are the people behaving? Like, in 1983, why are the people behaving like this? Why is the government like this? We were complaining. Then we got to it. We got to what? 84. We say, oh, 83 was better. We got to 85. We say, oh, 83 was better. Now in 2022, I can tell you, 1983 was best. Was better because we didn't see better year in the world. You can only see better year in Christ, but you cannot see in the world. Amen. Amen. Some of you have been you have been around for a while now. Yeah. Now you see, a few years ago you say, "Oh, it was better." Now you get to another one and say, "What is this?" Now it looks like you now prefer that time even than this one. Is that true of us? Yes, true. You now prefer then than even this one. This one is we told us that that time was what, but now we don't like this one. That is what I'm telling you. That is why the Lord told you to be wise. That the whole world is under the world, even though the Lord created the world and He created the devil and sent him to the heart. Before creation of man. So he knows. God knows himself that be careful. The old world is under the sway of the power of darkness. Be careful. But once you answer my call to salvation. Then you are no longer one of those that are manipulated by him. Even though the world that you are living in may be tough. But you will have it easy. I will be with you. I will help you. I will lead you. I will give you information to overcome him. Revelation to take advantage. In, in possessing your possessions. I will make them available to you. That is what the grace of the cross provides for us. Amen. 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 Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30. Jesus came to bring peace to the troubled world. Yes. Come to me. Come to me. All you who labor. All who you, you who labor. And are heavy laden. And heavy laden. And I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon and you. And learn from me. Learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. You will find rest for your soul. After you have taken my yoke upon you, not for free. Mm-hmm. And the yoke is not, he says it's not heavy. What is the yoke? He said, just obey. Now, God does not, I was telling my children in the house yesterday in our devotion, I said, God does not want you to obey because he wants to enslave you. Because he knows that in obedience, obedience, you will walk in revelation and in the information to overcome the devil. The only way to overcome the devil is to walk in information and revelation to overcome. And what are the information and revelation? Is what? Obedience. God program, God knows that human beings, we are smart, we are selfish, but we are not selfish to godly things. I was wondering, the day I realized all this information from God, then I became very wise. And since then, I've been looking at some unbelievers as if they are not wise. When I see people that are still living in sin, I say, you are not smart, you are not wise. You think you are, but you are not. I remember I was speaking to a woman that uh, that misbehaved uh, 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 maritally. And she was saying that I'm wise, I know what I'm doing. I said, you are not wise. You You act foolishly. Anybody that behaves the way you are behave is foolishness. It's not wisdom. See, when you live in sin, you are not wise. You are foolish. Because if you know that obedience is working in revelation and provisions and information to overcome the devil, then you don't obey. Are you wise? No. Nope. You are not. Which means you are showing that I don't want to be. That's why Jesus said, come to me. You are troubled. You are carrying SS luggage. There are some people that walk on the street. They are not lifting anything physical, but they, they are, their neck is getting shrinked. Because they are under pressure of trouble. SS luggage of life. You see people walking on the street and talking alone. How many people have seen people like that? Walking and talking. You see young people, young people committing suicide because they say they are, they are, they are 17 years old. Say he, he, he's, he's depressed. 17. This is the world we are living in. Devil has lifted the load upon that 17 year old. And if you get 16 years of committing suicide because he's depressed. Because they will not answer the call to salvation. Come to me if you are depressed. Come to me if you are sorrowful. Repent from your sin if you are confused. Repent, you will see 
the revelation will be coming to you. And you see your soul lifted and delivered from the excess luggage of the devil. That's why Isaiah said, on that day, the door, 10, 10 27, his Lord will be delivered from what? From your, your shoulder. shoulder. And his Lord will be removed from your neck. neck. Which day is he talking about? The day of revelation or information. The day you know Christ. The day you receive information about the truth. The day you accept the knowledge of truth. Then his Lord will be taken off your shoulder and his Lord from your neck. And because of the anointing of the Lord Jesus, every yoke shall be what? Broken. Broken from you. And you'll be free. And for the first time, you feel happiness. You feel you be, you be uplifted from sorrow and pain. Because the world is full of depression. Depressive situation. Depressing situation. Sorrow, pain, disappointment, rejection, failure, disappointment at the head of breakthrough. Enemies attacks there and there. But if you want to be free, you must walk in the revelation that Christ has gone to give and information that has come to give. That's why he said, come and learn from me. I have the information. I have the revelation that can bring you peace and joy. But if you now reject it, do you have the peace and joy? No. Now, if you now begin to blame God, is it to blame? No. It's not to blame because you reject the information and revelation. In the book of John 14, 27 to 28, can you read for me? Then we'll go to Hebrew 4, 1 to 7. John 14, 27 to 28. Peace I live with you. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Not as the world give, but peace I give. My peace kind of peace is different, yes? Let not your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Don't be afraid. You have heard me say to you. You have heard me say. I am going away. I am going away. I am coming back to you. I will come back someday. If you loved me. If you love me. You would rejoice. You will rejoice that I am going. Because I said. Yes. I am going to the Father. Uh -huh. For my Father is greater than I. Amen. Amen. Don't let your heart be troubled. If you are in Christ. But if you are not in Christ. Come to him to experience the peace. Through information and revelation. That he has brought. In the book of Hebrew, chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. Hebrew 4, 1 to 7. Therefore, yes. since a promise remains of entering his rest. Because the promise of salvation is about rest. Let us fear. Even in the days of the Israelite, the Lord said, If you believe in me, I will bring you to a promised land, a place of rest. Yes. yes. Let us fear. Let us fear. Lest any of you seem to have come short of it. So that you will not come short of the promise of rest. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. The gospel as it is preached to us today, it was preached in those days to the Israelites. But the word which they heard did not profit them. And the word which they had did not do them any good, did not bring them peace. Instead of peace, they have war and terror. Yes? Not being mixed with their faith. The word did not mix with their faith. In those who heard it. And from those who heard it. For we who have believed do not enter that rest. Hold on first before you continue. You see, children of Israel, they were known to be people that follow God, isn't it? Yeah. They're not to be what? People that follow God. But did they have peace? No. no. There are people that follow God today also. Yeah. They don't have peace. They don't have peace not because God is not offering peace, because they are not, they are not living according to information and revelation. You can be going to church and be an Israelite, another Israelite. You can be praying and be another Israelite. You can be, you can be fasting and be another Israelite. You can be a bishop, a pastor, an evangelist and be another Israelite. If you are not walking in the revelation and what and information that Jesus Christ brought in obedience to his word, you will be another Israelite that walk and follow God and does not experience any peace. There are Christians like that. They will tell you, I don't have any testimony. I have never experienced any peace. He struggle and trouble every time. Ah, is he a force to give my life to Jesus? Since I give my life to Jesus, it's just trouble. Check the kind of Jesus you gave your life to. Have you given your life in obedience or you are giving your life in going to church? Have you given your life in repentance of your character or you just give your life in changing your outlook only scarf and skirt that you have changed? You have not changed character and, and behavior. You will be another Israelite. Because the word of God, if it does not mix with your faith in making you repent from your sin, then you will not experience peace. You may be going to church. You may be praying. You may be worshiping. You may even be a pastor or bishop. If you do not live in obedience to his word, you will not see revelation that he wants to see and information to be a way to be free from trouble and pain in order to receive peace. Yes, continue. For we who have believed 
We who have believed, look at that now. We who have believed do enter that rest. What is the mean? I told you sometimes ago the meaning of believe. I said believe is different from understand. If I tell you something, you say I understand, but that doesn't mean that you, you, you believe. You only believe what you begin to put into practice and do. But you understand what you believe, what you understand, but you don't do it. You have understanding, but you are not doing it. Then you don't believe, you are not a believer. When you believe, at that stage, your belief begins to do them. So that's why Apostle Paul said here that we, as for we, the believers, those who live with information and revelation that Jesus brought. Look at what happened to us. Yes? We do enter that rest. We do enter that rest. We have rest. We, we have peace of mind. We may not have enough money, but we are peaceful. We may not live in the kind of life we want to live, but we are happy. We are not depressed. We may not possess our possession yet, but we have hope and trust that God is bringing them. We have something to anchor our hope on. We are not hopeless. Amen. Amen. We have hope. We have promises. We are confident that we are expecting. You see, when you have a promise that somebody, you don't have money to, with you now, but somebody has promised to give you uh, 1000 next week. Now, you don't have money now. Are you not going to be happy or not? You are going to be looking at the clock ticking. Till what? Till next, next week. week. My money is coming. Money. Just like student expecting student finance. So when you see, you may be broke, but you are looking at next week. They just they, they send me text back that they come in three days. You know what? You are happy. That yes, yes, yes. I don't have one pound, but I believe 200 is coming. Amen. Amen. That is the, those who believe in God. They may not have, but they are happy because what? It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. The Lord is not deaf concerning my prayers. His eyes are not blind to see me, you see. And his hands are not short to do what? To help me. You may, you may be naturally down as a human being, according to our nature, you see. But you believe that his grace is sufficient for me. you. Amen. Amen. That is what will lift you out of pain all the time. It will lift you out of sorrow all the time. When you come to the, that thinking. You remember when Jesus Christ was sorrowful? When he was about to short light to go to the cross? The Bible told us he was praying. Seriously, that is, the dropping of the sweat looked like the drop of blood. And he said, at the end of the day, what did he say? He said, Lord, if you can make this, cro this cup overcome me, I mean, uh, uh, pass away from me. But nevertheless, let your will, let my will, but your will be done. Amen. And he was lit. He was happy after he said that. Amen. So Amen. that is what gives you joy as a Christian, I believe. And you see God's coming forth for you and coming through for you. Amen. Amen. So at this stage, I want to round up. By, uh, we will still see about a few more Bible passages, but I want to tell you, I won't round up without telling you that he prophesied his own death. And why am I telling you these three important points? These three next important, important points is to let you know that whatever the Bible has recorded has come to pass. And the one that is still recording now that we are still reading as prophecy of the Bible will still come to pass. Don't forget them. He prophesied his coming, Mark 9, 30 to 31. He prophesied his return to the world, John 14, 1 to 6. John 13, 31 to 36. Let's read. And the last one, the angels confirm his imminent return. We are going to see that, those things now. Yes? He prophesied his death and resurrection, Mark 9, 30 to 31. Mark 9, 30 to 31. Let's read that quickly. Mark 9, 30 to 31. Then they departed from there and passed through Galilee. Yes. And he did not want anyone to know it. Yes. For he taught to he taught his disciples and said to them, Yes. The Son of Man is being betrayed. The, the Son of Man will be betrayed into yes. the hands of men. Uh-huh. And they will kill him. They will kill the Son of Man. And after he is killed, and after he is killed, he will rise the third day. He will rise the third day. So he was telling his disciples that somebody is betraying me now. I will be killed by, by them, but after third day, I will resurrect again. He prophesied, and it happened the way he said it. In fact, he did not just say he got to the hearings of his disciples. He got to the hearing of also what? The Pharisees and the Sadducees and those who arrested him. That was why after his death, they put what? They put soldiers at the cave, in the place where he was buried. But death could not hold him in captive. My soul... Magnify the Lord, magnify my spirit, praise His name. For death, for death, could never hold Him 
captive, even in the grave. He resurrected. He does his work for them, for them who never hold him captive, even in the grave. Even the soldiers could not hold him captive. The Pharisees and Sadducees could not hold him captive. He resurrected bodily. The Bible said the stones were rolled away. And he came back alive. He is alive again. He is no longer where he was laid. He is alive again. The stone have rolled away. He is alive again. I can hear the angels sing. Let all the war rejoice. He is alive. Hallelujah. Amen. He prophesied his return to the world. John 14, 1 to 6. John 13, 31 to 36. John 14, 1 to 6. Yes. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Trust me also. In my father's house. In my father's house. There are many mansions. There are many villas. Mansions there, yes. If it were not so, if it was not so, I would have told you. I would have told you. I go to prepare a place. You know that I don't lie. Jesus does not. Does he not lie? He said there are mansions in heaven, houses. So he said, don't worry yourself. The building you see is just a just a just a mirage of what is in heaven. The heavenly mansions are the real houses. Here you don't have houses. Yes. I go, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for After you. After preparation of those places for you. I will come back and, I, again. I will come back again. And receive you to myself. I will receive you. I will take you away to myself. That, that's where I am. Where I am. There you may be also. You can also be. And where I go. Where I go. You know. You know. And the way you know. And the way you know. Thomas said to him. To verse. To verse 6. Verse 5 now. Uh-huh. Thomas said to him, Yes, Lord, uh-huh. we do not know where you are going. Yes. And how can we know the way? Uh-huh. Jesus said to him, Uh-huh. I am the way. I am the way. The truth. The truth. And the life. The life. No one comes to nobody the Father. Nobody comes to the Father. Except through me. Except through me. You see, nobody can go to heaven except by believing in Jesus. If somebody tells you that because I'm a Muslim I'm going to heaven, they are telling you lies. Because I have knowledge of Islamic teachings myself. It doesn't lead to, I can tell you because of those experiences, it doesn't lead to heaven. Although it gives every information about what, they have percentage of information about what heaven is, but he has no power to bring you to heaven. Because a natural man cannot please God. Romans 8, chapter 8 said that. You cannot please God, be natural. So in Islam, there is nothing that is spiritual that can help you. So in Christianity, there is nothing spiritual that can help you. But in Christ Jesus, you receive what? The Holy Spirit. Because there are many Christians also that are religious today. That's why I mentioned Christianity. The only true religion is the religion that is born again in Christ, Jesus, Jesus, that you have a Holy Spirit. Religion cannot take you to heaven. Buddhism, Islam, uh, Satanism, Judaism, all the zim, 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 zims. Amen. But your trust in God and repentance from your sin and having the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit that empowers you to do what God acquire, requires you to go to go to heaven. Amen. Amen. That is why it's not exaggeration to say there is no other way to get to heaven but through me. What it means that is that through every information and revelation that I brought to you, that's the only way you can get to heaven. Any other thing will lead you to hell. So you must be smart if you want to spend your eternity in heaven. heaven to quickly repent from your sin and follow every information and revelation provided by the Lord Jesus. John 13, 31 to 36. So when he had gone out. When Jesus had gone out. Jesus said. He said. Now the Son of Man is glorified. Sorry, when he has gone out, Jesus said. 
and God is glorified in him. The Son of God is glorified, and God is glorified in me in him. If God is glorified in him, yes, God will also glorify him in himself. Uh-huh. And glorify him immediately. Uh-huh. Little children, little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. Uh-huh. You will seek me. Uh-huh. And I said to the Jews, uh-huh. where I am going, uh-huh. you cannot come. Uh-huh. So now I say to you, uh-huh. a new commandment I give to you, uh-huh. that you love one another uh-huh. as I have loved you, uh-huh. that you also love one another. Amen. By this uh-huh. all will know uh-huh. that you are my disciples. Uh-huh. disciples uh-huh. If you have love for one another. By this all we know that you follow me, you are a Christian. If you follow the information and revelation I gave you about true love. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So he told them that I am going, but I will back also. But I want to live on for me, for he that love you and died for your sin. The angels of the Lord confirm his imminent return. They confirm his imminent return. Acts 1, 9 to 11. The angels confirm his imminent return. That the way this same Jesus will come back again. The way he told us that he will resurrect third day and he resurrected. He is coming back again. Yes. Now, when he had spoken these things, when he had spoken these things, while they watched, while they watched he him, he was taken up. He was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight into the sky, and he disappeared into the sky. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, when they were looking at ovens seriously into heaven, as he went up, as he went up into heaven, behold, behold, two men stood by them. Two men stood by them in white apparel. In white apparel. Who also said, and they said to them, to the disciples, men of Galilee, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? Why are you so looking surprisingly into the heaven? This same Jesus, this same Jesus, who was taken up from you, who into has heaven, been taken away from you into heaven, will so come in like manner. The same way we come from heaven one as day saw him go into as heaven. you see him going that's the same way we come back then they return to jerusalem and they return to jerusalem from the mount called olivet amen that's okay amen amen you see jesus is coming back again don't let us this uh, contain us this statement don't let us push it aside if whatever he said about his death and resurrection came to pass he's coming back also it's real don't let anybody deceive you the only thing is that he may meet you on heart he may not meet you but he's coming even if he has not met you physically, he will meet you, he meet your soul, and your soul will resurrect with him. Amen. Amen. We saw in the book of Matthew that we just read, in Matthew chapter uh, 27 that we read, to 60, 33 to 36, we saw that the souls of the dead in Christ, what they did what? They resurrected with him. It's just to show us what will happen at his resurrection, I mean when he come back again. The souls of the dead in Christ will resurrect. And they will catch you. The Bible says in the book of Thessalonians that the souls, those who die, will come out first to join him in the sky. And later on, we that we are living with the world will also join them. Amen. Amen. So he is coming. Resurrection is real. Rapture is real. It is imminent. And we must expect it every day. People, Christians are almost forgetting that Jesus is coming. Their focus is no longer on the coming of Jesus. And that is why you see, church, is, sin is increasing in the church. Sin is increasing in the church. Yesterday I was speaking to my brother that is a pastor in, in Nigeria. He mentioned something. He said in the in the in the, in the meeting of pastors in the in the training that they went to, some elderly minister of God were there. And they were, a, a man that was teaching there was talking, he said, You men of God need to be very careful in these end times. Because he used he used Yoruba language to describe it. He said Iguruti Daru. And you that you are faithful man of God, you have to stand very well. What's the meaning of Goroti Daru? Which means the streets are in trouble. In other words, the ministers of God that are around the street, they are what? They are destroying everything. They are not working right anymore. They are misleading people. They are cheating and robbing. Some people are using charms and incantation. It's so bad now that this, the elect will be very careful to walk upright. Don't compare your standard with anybody. Don't compare your church goal with anyone because you don't know what they are doing. You must, that will only distract you to follow their pattern. You must stand right and stand focused and waiting upon the coming of our Lord Jesus. Otherwise, you'll be distracted if you begin to look around. And Jesus said something very important that I want everybody to read as I close. In the book of Luke, chapter 12, 8 to 9. Let everybody turn to the book of Luke. Everybody, everybody, turn to the book of Luke 12, 8 and 9. Luke chapter 12, verses 8 and and nine. Luke chapter twelve, verses eight and nine. Are we there? Yeah. Now let's go. One to go. Also, also I, I say, say to, to you, you 
Whoever confesses me before men, him the Son of Man will also confess before the angels and of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. Can you see that? He said, whoever confesses me, in other words, whoever believe in me, I will also stand for him. Whoever denied me before men, in other words, when you are in this world, you deny me, you reject my word. You reject my teachings. You reject my information. When you die also, I will, I will, I will reject you. Before angels and, my, and God, I will disown you. That is why that passage of the book of Matthew in chapter 7, verse 21 says, some will come to me on that day and say, in your name, I did this, I did that. And I will tell on them, what? The path. I know you're not. The path from me, you walk us off. That is what that statement means. No matter what you do in the church, you say, God, I know you. I was a Christian in the church, in the way of Christ. I was born again in the MFM. I was in deeper life. I was in redeemed church. Don't you recognize the time I was washing uh, uh, the floor in the church? I was scrubbing the toilet every Sunday. I was I was uh, one of the usher group. I was in the choir. I was an uh, assistant pastor. I was a Bible carrier. I was even a pastor. I was a bishop, an evangelist, a reverend. Don't you remember me, Jesus? Jesus will say, only those I remember are those who obey me. If you are not one of them, one of them Get out of here. I do not know, know you. you. It's not that I don't know who you are, but I don't know you as one of my own. And therefore, you have no place in my kingdom. If you want to be a Christian, be a Christian right. If you want to be a believer, let it be good. There's no need to be one leg in and one leg out. You are not properly born again, and you are not properly in the sin. It's cheating. You are robbing yourself. You have to use this information and revelation that Jesus has come to give us so that you can be complete and serious child of God that will not be tossed left and right by any minister's message. You stand on the truth. You hold on the truth because this is the matter of life and death. Anything that will take you to hellfire is what? Is a matter of life and death. death. You need to take your life more seriously as believers. Take your life what more seriously because the rapture can take can can happen anytime. A lot of people that that, that in this in this year alone, a lot of people are dead. They didn't plan to die, but it just happened. So you must take your life seriously. If you need to repent properly, repent properly. If you need to pray regarding prayer, repentance, pray. If you need to ask somebody to help you, ask somebody to help you. But you must properly hold on to Christ so that you can enjoy the peace that he had to offer. Amen. The amazing grace is still there available for you. The amazing grace is calling you and beckoning unto you daily. Say, come to me. Come home, sinners. Come closer to me that I'll be close to you. That you may experience my peace and joy. Oh, Amazing grace, oh, amazing grace, oh, amazing grace, Jesus deliver me, amazing hope. Praising of sin in pain, despair, and fear, weeping and wailing, wanted to be free. Just who could help myself? But Jesus came just in time to set me free. He wiped away my tears. By shackles of sin, I needed atonement for sin. Rejoice.
rejected by families, condemned by the war, so lonely no one to help. I saw the little God of war from the Lord, my grace is sufficient for thee. There's no condemnation for me. Deliverance and liberty came by His grace in heaven and mansion for me. It's all for the hopeless restorer of all, Jesus, my Savior and friend. Feet, say, Lord Jesus, here I am, I am today before you. Yeah, Jesus, here I am today. I surrender completely my life to you. I surrender completely my life to you. Forgive Lord. my sins, Lord. Forgive my sins, Lord. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord. Jesus. And hold my hand until the day I see you and in heaven. Hold my hand until the day I Begin see you. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus. 